All right, welcome everyone to part two of the teardown of the Supra. Getting ready for the stereo. Soundproofing's done in the trunk. Now it's time to tackle the doors. So this project is gonna involve this is a little four inch speaker and we're actually gonna take this out and end up with a six and a half inch speaker in this area right here. Probably gonna get rid of the pocket and uh, move this trunk switch maybe to the face of it here or somewhere. And uh, this is gonna be uh, custom, custom made to hold the six and uh, we don't have the finals on it yet. Um, my initial thought is maybe making it in the red um, leather uh, to match kind of like they do on the launch edition of Supras, but we'll see. Um, so I'm going to start taking this door apart. I'll do a little uh, walkthrough on um, how to pop this door panel off the Supra. Um, we'll go from there. All right, the very first thing you want to do is you want to get down in here where that little groove is. And you want to pull, sorry for the light, you want to pull this this way, like teeters up that way. Pop that off and then behind here is another little panel that you have to pop off. Um, I don't have great lighting for this, unfortunately, and doing camera all at the same time, but let me see if I can put this up top here. All right. So anyways, with some light, a little pick, be able to get down in there under it. You're kind of popping. Just pull. As you can see, you got the little wedged feet here, so it's just lifting up this way. Pops this out. And then pull the door handle open. There's another little spot. Give it a pull. Pulls this little trim panel out. And then down in here, I'm using one of my little T20 torques. We're gonna remove the two screws down in here all the way out. And there's one behind the handle here. Let me get those out and then I'll show you the next step. All right, the next thing you need to do is, now I just use a little 10 millimeter uh, uh, wrench like this there is like a part right here and another one right here that you can actually if you get up and look up underneath kind of let's see if i can show it on the camera right here is this white little tab and what it is is it's an oval and there's an oval cutout you can see a little gap there's a little oval cutout. So basically you need to turn that with your wrench until those ovals are aligned so that this can pull away from the panel. So it actually locks it on. It's not a push to release. And then once that is released, both of them, um, you will actually physically pop the door panel off like a lot of standard door panels off with pressure clips. So I won't be able to film this as I get this off. So I will show it here in a second. Now with those ovals turned, like I was showing earlier, basically here's the ovals where you've turned them to match the holes down here. The rest of these are just normal standard pressure clips that you just kind of get underneath your other hands and pull. You don't really need a pry tool. They, they come out pretty easy. They're all inside these little holes. They press in real simple. The door lock mechanism just falls. Um, the door handle part just literally poop, unclips. And then you have a little bit of a harness here. Uh, some of these little blue ones just pull out with a little pressure. And then this is more like a Molex locking one. So it has a little tiny press in on the top. You press it in then so you can rotate this and it just kind of unsockets itself. And then you have a nice clean door panel off here. Pretty simple. So as you can see, there's not a lot to soundproof in this area. You can lay some up on this plastic and a little bit in here but you do need to keep these holes clear and you got to make sure if you add any sound dampening on this part right here which i probably won't it'd be real close to making this not fit properly so 
There's not a whole lot of sound dampening that can be done here. I'm going to peek inside here and see what is attached to this big piece. Um, possibly I can unsnap this and work on the inner door panels, which are really what I really want to do, but I don't know yet until I dig into it. So I'll dig into it here and then hit record again. All right, so with the door inside panel pulled off, you end up with this panel right here. Um, I was a little scared to take this off, I admit it. Um, but once I saw it and it was done, it's no big deal. There's one bolt right here that is like right here. Hey, light flashing. Uh, that need to be undone to be able to pull this away, but you do not have to disconnect any of the window, regulator, motor, any of the alignment parts. And this gives you good access where you can get this kind of out of the way to get in here. Now that's factory soundproofing that you can add to it. Um, where I really want to add soundproofing is, is on the back side of this. It's real easy to, to, to layer sheets up in there and you don't have to worry about it with interfering with anything. And then down on the very bottom, kind of like, this part inside um, it's just like a hollow sounding mess so fitting some soundproofing up in there it would be a, a big advantage so don't know why my lights flashing battery must be getting low so anyways i'm gonna get some soundproofing layered up in there I'll try to show that process as i'm doing it oh uh, but you know these are really easy you just turn till they click and come off they go in these really funky holes these funky holes right here to you, they turn and then you snap them in and align it. And then there was just some Torx bits, you know, that came out real easy, uh, Torx bolts. Well, I kind of thought I'd show you at least working on it, putting a little bit of sound deadening in. I basically look at where the next piece that I'm gonna put in, and kind of guesstimate what will fit. And this is about as big as piece that I can fit in here right now, going this way. So I got the inside door warm. Feel the backing off the material. It just, this material does not even need any heat added to it, but it does help work it a little bit better. If it is a little warmed up. And I know where the piece is going. I've made a plan on how I'm going to feed it in and down and over. And now, with a little light, I'm going to see the maximum that I can put it over and then try to push it down. really hard to get your hand in here and work around, but I do not want to undo this regulator. And a really good product like this Second Skin and Dynamat and uh, some other brands, they, it sticks so well and it won't come undone. So as long as you can apply some pressure to the surface of the sound dampening material and adhesive it to the wall, it won't come undone. That would be bad if it fell down and got messed up in the door. Um, I'd take it all apart again. but. That came out good. I'm gonna keep working it down. This one, can I show you as I'm doing it? Now I do have a roller, a rubber roller to rub it down. The most important thing with something like this is on that exterior that you don't boink it or bonk it because that could put an Audi dent and then the paint and stink out have to fix it for you. And don't roll it too hard. You don't you definitely wouldn't want to roll like that to do a transfer to the outside. Alright, so 
show you some so you can see some of the factory soundproofing and then I've gone over it I've gone and pushed it as far as I could up inside all that door and then beneath that column down there and then that's that piece you saw me working in it goes way back way back in there so and it doesn't matter if it overlays I mean you really should put two layers on if you have the material to do it it will really help the door out a lot so like I said the next thing I'm going to be working on is the inside of this to put some on here to just kind of make this not sound as tinny and if I'm able to put it on the inside of this I don't have to worry about the flushness of the door because I will be adding some of the material to the inside back of the door panel itself so you know trying not to keep any thickness from happening because you know this is a screw point that sits flush and then you got this piece that's sitting flush so you can't really add any thickness to this in in a lot of areas like here's the two screw points for the door handle I think no no that holds this black but anyways you get my point you don't want to add too much thickness to it I'll show you something here what I'm talking about doing it on the inside so I layered a little piece here hear this and I'm just fitting a little tiny piece like this you know up in here and squishing it down just in this area I don't really have to worry about that hurting anything or blocking any holes um, especially like this hole so and it just helps every little bit helps you don't have to do a full coverage on this metal this will absorb the energy around it and transfer basically it turns vibrations into heat which reduces rattles which makes the sound level lower stuff like that all right, I'm over here on the passenger door. Not that it's any different from the driver's side door. I just want to kind of put our, uh, you know, coming to the end of this video here. And uh, about the same thing, you know, uh, sound, you know, the um, second skin up here, down beneath that bar, up underneath, like here on the inside, and like some square panels, like in here, behind here, you know, some pieces to kind of make this sound dead. So what I'm gonna do, um, you know, I showed you moving this out of the way. I'm going to show just snapping it back together and putting the wire harness back. Um, it wasn't uh, wasn't very complicated. I might be able to do this one. All right. So for uh, putting this back together, it's it's not very hard. It's a very simple car um, to work on. Um, I just use a flathead screwdriver to turn these little index things. Um, this pretty much has just some alignment tabs. On it. The main thing is, is where this wire harness goes through. Um, you see how you just kind of snaps in, and then you just turn these to the arrows align. And that's about it. While pushing, you know, while giving a little pressure, you know, so they're not doing all the work of uh, sucking that door panel in. Heard that one snap. I wasn't pushing hard enough. So, uh, you know, other than that, you know, you need to, you know, put this back where it was. Um, the little clips just kind of fall in place. There's not much, you know, you don't, you could take a picture before you started if you wanted. Um, I never had to disconnect any of this. Um, uh, this is the part going to the door. And this is the part wrapping around to the bottom speaker terminal, the other top of the speaker. Um, is built into the door. It's the tweeter, you know, up here. Like I said, you wanted to have that where it needed to be. That never did move. There's another push clip right here. Um, so really all we have left is this one that was attached, these two that attached to the door itself. Uh, you don't want to forget the single nut right here that holds that window regulator. These two never came out, which hold it to the metal. Um, this just needs a 10 millimeter. It wasn't like super tight before. Good hand tightening. Yeah, you know, like 10, 15 pounds of torque. Um, and then don't forget you have all these, uh, you know, bolts you have to put in with this Torx uh, 30 
uh, T30, hand tighten them. So other than that, it's just basically snapping the door panel on um, over this. So these never did get moved, so they should index right in. You know, you should be pushing on the door panel and then get up in there at that wrench and turn these and that'll lock in. Now, what, what I would suggest um, before you start this project is you go to the Toyota dealer and you pick up some of these clips. They are bound to break. Um, so basically they just pull out and this one is not functioning properly right now. And all I did was take it out probably the first time ever in its life. Um, if I try to snap, if I try to snap this one in, those things go everywhere. Um, the little head's gonna break off it. These these things are sometimes one time. Sometimes you can get them to, you know, to pull out and release. But basically, as they clip in, they expand. So if they're not tight together, when you go to push them in, they do break off. I broke two of them. Not even trying. You know, just on the other side, just happened. So. I bet you they're a buck a piece at Toyota dealer, so you're gonna need them. Um, and that and that's pretty straightforward. Snap this door panel back on. Just don't forget to plug in your tweeter, plug back in to your window thing. Um, that's the two things underneath here, and you'll be good. I guess since I keep saying how easy it is, and I didn't even show it on the other side, I'll show you guys putting this um, door panel back in. All right, so first thing you need to do is get that uh, tweeter plugged in. Well, you don't have to do it first, but I'm gonna. And then you have the power windows and the door lock. So the door lock snaps and locks in and it has two clips to clip the wire harness onto the door panel and then all I've left is the window one just kind of hiding up here by the speaker in and then you have I don't know if you can see it you know your door handle clip it's the easiest of them all so bring this up get it in where it needs to go, pops in, start at the top, real easy hits, nothing major, um, you can see where the, the white, kind of hear them clipping on. Now I'm gonna get underneath and do those clips with the wrench. Um, I'm gonna show that for the video because that's just turning them and locking them as you're pulling this tight against each other. Um, the doors are done. I did uh, five square foot of this in the doors. It's super light. I mean, five square foot is probably quarter of a pound, half pound at the most. Um, but it will make a huge difference in the sound of the door when you're driving down the road, the door will just feel loaded and deep, you know, a lot better sounding, especially with the speaker having mid bass in here. So um, the doors are done. Uh, the only thing left on the doors is when it goes to the stereo shop, we take the door panel off. After this gets modified on the inside of the plastic door panel here, we're probably going to put some closed cell foam, which is a spongy foam that it keep rattles from happening between the plastic of this and the metal and uh, it'll be one big sheet um, and I'm probably going to, I can do it or the shop's going to do it. Um, that will just help with a lot of rattles um, in the door and that stuff does absorb some sound but it's mostly for padding and rattles but that can't be done until we get done modifying this. So uh, there's a screw here and these two screws when you're finally done. So that puts a wrap on this video. Um, soundproofing of the doors part two. Uh, part three next week is delivering the car to JML Audio and um, we're going to do just a uh, show all the product and kind of what the plans are, where the product's going in the car and um, you know some, some ideas that we're going to be trying to accomplish with the stereo install and I'll run over that with everybody. 
Man, so thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button, and see y'all later.